Today we're going to talk about Sikandar Raza, and he's a cricket player. And Greg wants to tell us about the videos we're going to watch. So this video is he was picked the man of the week or MVP, as we might call it in the U.S., for a game between Zimbabwe and Pakistan, in which he they had just beaten Pakistan. You'll hear him talking about that. They'll ask him questions about how the team's doing, about what the future of the team looks like. Uh, Sikandar, a great performance. Uh, at what time uh, did you actually start believing that uh, this match could come in your side? Uh, before the first ball was bowled. Um, I personally thought, as I said, we were 15 or 20 runs short. Um, but I really, truly believe in this group of boys. We knew that if you can feel well and take all our chances and cut those important twos, um, we could we could really win this game. And the way um, Garava and Mabunu started the first two overs, and then, of course, um, we had early wickets. Brad took a wicket in the fourth over, then Mabunu took one in the fifth over. And to have... Uh, and then I think Iftihar got out in the seventh over or something like eighth over. So to have Pakistan down for 30 yard, I thought that was a start we needed. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is a really good example of watching somebody internalize a question before they respond to it. Right out of the gate, he comes out and says, by the football. But if you notice, he's got that slow blink rate to do data intake as the person's asking the question. Then he drives home his point by illustrating him. We say an illustrator, mean he is pushing his or punctuating his thoughts, words and phrases with some movement. He does it with his brow as he's looking, as he narrows his eyes, thinking about what he's saying. Anytime he's at a place where he is doing any kind of recall, you look, his eyes narrow and he looks away as he's trying to think about tales of something. But then that that one statement out the door is bold right up front. We knew right up front we we're going to win this game. Scott, what do you got? All right. His excitement shows it when he's at the very beginning when he's kind of swaying back and forth. He's 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 this is a big deal for him. So he's excited about it. His eyes are wide, his posture is great, it's spot on. His head his head's cocked back a little bit, giving him that air of confidence. But it's not so it's that arrogance that you see, but it's just that that confidence you want to see in in, in your sports team or someone on your on your team. Um but then that returns to normal as he as he starts answering the question. His cadence is fast, which it should be at this point, and then uh, his, dic his diction is very clear, very clean. You can understand everything he's saying. And then he squints as he's thinking about what he's going to say next, as he, before he gives that last piece of information. And we see his eyes knit right here, just a little bit where he says, "I really," because he's really into that. He's not. He's not. We're not at the point yet in the uh, interview where he starts using his uh, his illustrators really big, but we'll move on to that in just a few minutes. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I mean, the question here is, is are we looking at somebody who could lead Zimbabwe to total victory? My understanding is, and cricket fans, you'll be able to tell us down below, but Zimbabwe have been causing some stirs in the, uh, the T20 because they've been doing exceptionally well. And is this guy a, a star of the cricket scene? Here's what I see. Yeah, like you, Scott, that that moving from side to side most likely excitement looks a little bit what greg might call chained elephant but i don't think it's that and interesting you know greg didn't bring it up i think if it was um a real sense of of worry which is often why you might get this side to side movement greg probably would have brought it up I th i'm with you it's more likely excitement but by the way sometimes you'll see this side to side movement when somebody's targeting when they're trying to work out hang on what's the what's the distance because it's one of our ways of changing angles on a situation to work out what the distance is and of course this guy is an incredible bowler and he's going to be all about how do you get target and how do you get distance so we also get that narrowing of the eyes when he's targeting with his answer, targeting the person who's brought forward the question. We get an eyebrow raise. That's usually uh, a request for approval or a request to say, hey, I know you, we're friendly. And he's looking for that on we took early wickets. So the question has been, look, do you think, do you think you're any good at this game? Do you think you have a good team? He raises his eyebrows and he says, we took early wickets to say, can't you recognize that we started out really well on this therefore i'm suggesting we might continue in this way and the narrative is uh that we we I, I thought we were going to win. I was confident before the first ball was bowled. So he's putting forward this narrative of we started off well. I knew we were going to be winners way before. The narrative is, is we're super confident and you should be looking out for us. Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, one thing, uh, 
right as the interviewer is asking this question, his mouth is open. When we're rehearsing lines and we're faking something, we're going through it in our head as a question is being asked, especially when we're nervous, we close our mouth. We tend to breathe through our nose instead. Another thing is the question's about him, and he uses team pronouns. He refers to we and us and our. So this is the language of leadership. Let's see in the in the next few videos what we got. All right. Well, if you don't know who we are, we're the Behavior Panel. And I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. And I created the number one online body language course, Body Language Tactics, with Greg Hartley. Mark? I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language, help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes, did 20 years in the U.S. military. I wrote the number one best-selling book on behavior profiling, influence, and persuasion, and I transform people's lives through teaching those skills today. Greg? Greg Hartley. I'm a former... In- <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor, written 10 books on body language and behavior, and I spend most of my time in business. Uh, Sikandar, a great performance. Uh, at what time uh, did you actually start believing that uh, this match could come in your side? Uh, before the first ball was bowled. Um, I personally thought, as I said, we were 15 or 20 runs short. Um, but I really, truly believe in this group of boys. We knew that if we can feel well and take all our chances and cut those important twos, um, we could we could really win this game. And the way um, Garava and Mabunu started the first two overs, and then, of course, um, we had early wickets. Brad took a wicket in the fourth over, then Mabunu took one in the fifth over. And to have... Uh, and then I think Iftihar got out in the seventh over or something like eighth over. So to have Pakistan down for 30 yard, I thought that was a start we needed. And just like uh, your belief from the first ball, uh, do you think there's another belief that uh, this team could advance further? Are we going to take one game at a time? All our energies and focus was on Pakistan. Um, now with ships to Bangladesh, um, we'll do our analysis. Um, we'll take one game at a time. But inshallah, I genuinely believe in this group of boys. But what we have done is open the group for, for everyone. Everyone who plays good cricket can basically win. And uh, you never know where Zimbabwe end up. Uh, well bold, Sikander. Is Brad Evans your go-to man for the last over now? Um, I think all of us could be the go-to bowlers. I think it basically depends, I thought. So when Skipper asked me what my opinion is, uh, should Brad bowl the 19th or the 20th? Uh, I, my opinion was that we try and kill the game. If Biza, I mean, Grava has been bowling exceptionally well. If we can leave 15, 16 runs in the last over, I think uh, Brad being playing the first game, I thought the more runs we can leave for the youngster, the better. But I just saw the way he bowled, he, he, he held his nerve. Uh, credit to him, credit to the whole group, to be honest. And All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so listen, uh, last time I was saying, I think he is confident about the outcomes. Now I'm going to say, I'm not sure he's so confident about how they've got to those outcomes, what the triggers are, what is causing this success. We've opened uh, the group for everyone and there's a smile, but there's also a, a little bit more on one side than the other of that smile, which usually suggests a little bit of contempt there. So is that about the smile of opening that kind of, de- kind of democratic process? Look, now everybody has a chance because we've opened up this this game and is there a little bit of contempt there for the usual people who might be successful in t20 of course as you well know that's most likely going to be india pakistan you know some of the classic players there who who uh, teams there who do incredibly well Zimbabwe, a little bit of a, uh, you know, in the back uh, of the pack, usually. So potentially a little bit of delight and a little bit of contempt uh, for for other teams. Uh, Lip compression there, which is when we see the lips kind of disappear a little bit or 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 push together more likely lip compression on um on those those outcomes and also double shoulder shrug there so i'm not sure that he quite has a handle on why they're doing so well he knows they're doing well and there's a there's a, a a word that he uses there, which I believe is Arabic, and Greg, you'll be able to jump in for me there on Inshallah or something like that. And I think that might have some meaning behind it. So, so Greg, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so culturally, Inshallah is just part of how you would talk about tomorrow. You don't ever assume, like in Arabic, you don't assume anything will happen. That's 
presumptive for a human being to do. So it's part of the culture. And I know he's Pakistani, but even then it carries through with the religion and that. So I'll, I'll start by saying really could mean nothing, could mean something. But there is there are a couple of really interesting pieces of body language in here. There's an indicator that he is trying to recall information again because he squints his eyes and moves his eyes away in, in a break. But when he talks about Bangladesh, if you'll notice very closely, Mark, you're dead on. He does lip compression at Bangladesh. There's something around Bangladesh at this point. And you'll also see his brows kind of knit and move away like he has some uncertainty there. Interestingly, this is a day before, I believe, and they lost to Bangladesh the next day. So maybe he was fearful. Maybe there's something there. For you, if you're interested in how this is going to work out for India, watch as he's interviewed going into India and see if he does that same pattern. Maybe you'll see that you have some indicator. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I, did. I was a chief in the military. I don't talk about that very much. But there's one thing that you learn uh, when you become uh, a chief. And this is the, this one sentence that gets jammed into your head is to pass on credit and soak up blame. And we're seeing a very good demonstration of that here where he's offering genuine credit here with no reservation. Doesn't have to think very hard to give this positive compliment because he observed it in a positive way, I think, when it happened. So he's not having to like be jealous or insecure about any of this and then reword it later. So you're seeing this instantaneous lack of hesitancy with these compliments because he observed it in that way in real time. And that's one of the things that we might look for when we're doing uh, maybe a job interview and looking for someone who you need to hire as a team leader. Uh, Scott, what do you got? Yeah, well, here we're seeing the classic cue for I'm listening to you. And that's when someone's head is tilted a little bit toward toward what you're doing and they're listening. It's down to the side a little bit and it looks like they're listening to you. And his eyebrows are up just a little bit. So it looks like he's focused on you and listening to you. So if you want to give someone the impression you're listening, give that a shot, that'll help every time. And he, he illustrates sparingly with his right hand. Illustrators are things we use to um, punctuate or to emphasize specific words or phrases. And that's what he does here. They get a little bit more, these progress as he goes along as the excitement builds, but that's what those are for as he's ex as ex explaining what's going on. Uh, he says, we've opened a group to everyone. He smiles a little bit for there, just briefly for that, because he's proud of that. He, he wants to include, include people like Chase was saying, the leadership. Uh, part of this. And then when he talks about uh, never knowing where they'll end up, he squiggles a, little, uh, squiggles a little bit in his seat, and that's when he compresses his lips. I think he wants to say a little bit more there, but he's, but, but again, he's trying not to seem cocky, but he's, he's keeping that in as, he, as he's um, looking confident and, and exuding his, his confidence. And this leaves things open-ended, but positive. And so far, it's all pretty much confident cues, confidence cues we're seeing at this point. Then the shoulder shrugs and the redirective language suggests he doesn't know for sure if Brad's going to play in the first game. But, you know, I, I guess I, I guess he doesn't know. So that's what he's showing us with those things. When you see a little shoulder shrug like that, that that usually lets you know that person isn't confident with that answer answer or they may not know. I'm not seeing any deception in this, just his him being unsure about what's going to happen. All right. So I got we good. Mm hmm. And just like uh, your belief from the first ball, uh, do you think there's another belief that uh, this team could advance further? Are we going to take one game at a time? All our energies and focus was on Pakistan. Um, now with ships to Bangladesh, um, we'll do our analysis. Um, we'll take one game at a time. But inshallah, I genuinely believe in this group of boys. But what we have done is open the group for, for everyone. Everyone who plays good cricket can basically win. And uh, you never know where Zimbabwe end up. Uh, well bold, Sikanda. Is Brad Evans your go-to man for the last over now? Um, I think all of us could be the go-to bowlers. I think it basically depends. I thought, so when Skipper asked me what my opinion is, uh, should Brad bowl the 19th or the 20th? Uh, I, my opinion was that we try and kill the game. If Biza, I mean, Grave has been bowling exceptionally well. If we can leave 15, 16 runs in the last over, I think uh, Brad being playing the first game, I thought the more runs we can leave for the youngster, the better. But I just saw the way he bowled, he, he, he held his nerve. Uh, credit to him, credit to the whole group, to be honest. And um, How highly do you rate that win in terms of your, your career? Obviously, the number four ranked side in the, in the world, one run win, defending you know, a, a modest total on a, a good batting deck. Yeah, um, I, I think um, since I've been part of Zimbabwe cricket, I would rate that the, the best victory we've had because there's no better stage. This is World Cup, the biggest stage of all. And, and to beat Pakistan by one run, as you said, the modest total, 
I mean, you're going to have to do everything right to defend that. And I think which we did. So for me, that's probably the best victory I've been part of with Zimbabwe. You got man of the match tonight. How much do you owe that to Regis's glove work there for your, your third wicket? That was pretty impressive, wasn't it, down the leg side? Uh, brother, to be honest with you, fine. Yes, Alhamdulillah, I've got the man of the match. Had we won the game and had this trophy goes to or could have gone to somebody else, I wouldn't have cared less. Um, listen, sometimes it is like that. One guy who gets man of the match. But if you look at all of us, the way the way Williams bowled, the way Ryan Bull bowled that one over, the way Garava, Mabunu, I mean, Blessing and Brad, I mean, this could have gone to anybody and wouldn't have, I wouldn't have cared less. But uh, most important goal was to win this game and which we've done that. Alex. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, interesting. So I think what he's trying to do here is balance uh, a question there, which is provoking him to be proud of his achievement with that of a team leader. And so you get uh, on, you know, how highly do you rate that win? You get some kind of lip grooming there to suggest, hey, you know, I'm kind of looking good here and I need to look good here. But at the same time, pursed lips and forward holding back on that as well. Now, purse lips are interesting. Sometimes they hold back a comment. Sometimes it's somebody's thinking about something. Sometimes they're actually giving you directions. Some purse lips in some cultures is about go over that way. That's the direction instead of pointing. So no one body language cue makes uh, means the same thing in every circumstance within every culture. But here's what I would say in this one is I think he's being to an extent baited with a proud question he he has some pride around that as he should i mean we've seen pictures of him being really demonstrative on the pitch you know when he gets a win he's big and his arms are out and he's and he really celebrates a win here he's having to keep it a little more contained with these lip retractions of will withheld thought um I think there's a little bit of being under pressure here, under the spotlight, though he's an incredible player. I don't think he's used to this level of attention. I could be wrong. Let me know down below. Uh, but he keeps going away. Oh, by the way, um, his illustrators are really good. He, he does a really good flick away there in the narrative of, look, I couldn't, I couldn't care less, you know, if I didn't get that. And I, and I think it, it's true. Uh, that's a really good illustrator. So I think it's true. He's proud of that achievement, but he really could couldn't care less if somebody else got it. He'd be proud for them as well. So I think from my point of view, the team player narrative, the team narrative is very accurate, very true. I don't see any deception around that. And we know that teams that really play as teams can do exceptionally well, exceptionally well. So things look good for him and his uh, team at this point. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right. Like you were saying, these are the biggest illustrators we've seen so far. Again, the illustrators are the things you use to emphasize specific words or phrases or an idea. And sometimes you'll use illustrators to, and they're more gestures when you talk about building boxes and things like that, or when you describe building something. He's not describing building, but he's, this, he's giving you the situation and telling you the things that are important to him with these illustrators. Now, the question touched the nerve here because he sticks his tongue out and he holds it there just a second. And quite often when you see the tongue do that between the teeth, that, that usually suggests that person feels like they're getting away with something. I don't know what he would, thinks he would be getting away with here. So I think it's just part of his, him trying to hold his excitement in so he doesn't so he doesn't get too excited about the whole thing. But I think he feels good about it and he's trying to uh, control his emotion by doing that. The mouth grooming, um, that we've seen at the beginning of each one of these videos and throughout. Most of that, I, I believe, are adapters. And adapters are the things we use to get rid of that built-up stress or tension in situations. And obviously, anyone that's going to be interviewed on TV or the internet, whatever, and they, and they know a lot of people are going to be watching, you're going to see adapters quite often. Like right now, I just realized as I'm doing that, I'm sitting here pulling my arm like this a little bit <laughs> so because I'm the one in the, in the quote unquote spotlight of what we're doing right now. And his, his head shakes during the question, and that shows he's listening and taking in information. And um, he answers a little bit too quickly, or certainly he has been up to this point. And again, that suggests that he's excited about what's going on. He wants to get that information out. Then he leans toward that person that's a asking the question. That lets you know, too, that he's obviously he's going to be focused on this person. But he, that's showing you that he really, I think, subconsciously, he's like really wants to get into this. And so that's why he's doing that. And uh, I think I'll leave it pretty much at that right there. Chase, what do you got? I'm going to I'm going to give a quote shout out to Joe Navarro 
who wrote this brilliant one line that says any repeated behavior, repetitive behavior is self-soothing. And that's exactly, I think, what you're what you're saying here, Scott. And we're seeing that there. And when he's sorry, sorry, hang on, we mute that. <laughs> and when he is like just talking about getting named man of the game, what is it called? Man of the match, I think. Man of the match, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So he this this gesture, this kind of throwing away uh, gesture, is extremely common in this part of the world, and it's a very honest and instantaneous gesture where that's not meaningful to him. The meaningful thing is the team won, and when he's talking about these other people and how great they did, he said all of us, not all of them. He's not all of us together uh, did a great job. So he's not. If he was deliberately isolating them to make himself look good, he would say they all did a great job. But I think the language of leaders that we're really seeing here is all of us did a good job together. So we're seeing that it's not he's not forcing himself to behave differently than his normal behavior of what I would think is leadership here. That's all I got. Greg? <laughs> Sorry. This is a great example of a person who has the world culture behind him. This guy, I think, was born in Pakistan, went to school in Scotland, now lives in Zimbabwe, playing for that national team and started to play late. So he brings a lot of different parts of cultures with him. So you see a very world kind of culture to him, the way he goes about his, his language and everything else. I agree with all of you. He kind of flips. I couldn't care less if I got man of the match. I think he really does mean that. And if you pay attention, if you want a better emphasis on that fact the most emphatic thing he says in word pattern is win this game those are he changes cadence he changes the stress on the words and everything else the only interesting piece for me if you're watching to know how he feels is he does a lip compression at and we say a lip compression is withheld information whether that's emotion feeling or fact we can't tell but when he says the most important game or the best victory i've been part of he does a quick, quick lip compression. Does that mean I didn't play the part that you think I did? Does that mean that I don't know how we got there? Mark, I think it may go back to what you're saying in the beginning. Not really sure how we did it, but we did it. So now if we could do it one time, we could do it again. He's very careful with his words, and I think it's a good example. Let's pay attention to what he says in the next couple. Um, yeah, Holly, do you rate that win in terms of your your career? Obviously, the number four ranked side in the, in the world, one run win defending you know a modest total on a good batting deck yeah um, i i think um since i've been part of zimbabwe cricket i would rate that the the best victory we've had because there's no better stage this is world cup the biggest stage of all and and to beat pakistan by one run as you said the modest total i mean you're gonna have to do everything right to defend that and i think which we did so for me that's probably the best victory i've been part of with zimbabwe you got man of the match tonight. How much do you owe that to Regis's glove work there for your, your third wicket? That was pretty impressive, wasn't it, down the leg side? Uh, brother, to be honest with you, fine. Yes, Alhamdulillah, I've got the man of the match. Had we won the game and had this trophy goes to or could have gone to somebody else, I wouldn't have cared less. Um, listen, sometimes it is like that. One guy who gets man of the match. But if you look at all of us, the way the way Williams bowled, the way Ryan Bull bowled that one over, the way Garava, Mabunu, I mean, Blessing and Brad... I mean, this could have gone to anybody and wouldn't have, I wouldn't have cared less, but uh, most important goal was to win this game and which we've done that. How, ex how exciting is it that you're, you're still alive for the, the semi-finals as well? It looks like a really wide open group now. Oh, I, I thought the Irish boys did that yesterday as well to the other group. So it's quite nice to be, to be here where the group is wide open now and not just wide open, that Zimbabwe has got a really good chance to achieve something. I'm not going to start looking or thinking about the semi-final. I'm going to take one game at a time and, and, and look at Bangladesh and take it from there. All right. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, this is an interesting use of that tongue jet. You know, we talk a lot about tongue grooming the mouth because you're feeling stressed, but usually don't do that between words. When he says we're going to take it one day at a time, we're going to look at Bangladesh, his tongue juts out between those. That makes me think there was some stress already in him, some fear or, or uncertainty about how that Bangladesh game would have gone for you if you're in india and you're watching this and you're trying to figure out pay attention let's watch him when he's interviewed the day before 
or if it's the day after, whenever we're talking about the India match, we look for that same thing to see some kind of uncertainty. He does a really good job, however, of saying, look, I'm not going to start looking at the semifinals. Yeah, he's asking you for approval, raises his brow and the whole thing. But then when he says you're going to take it one day at a time and we'll worry about Bangladesh, pushes his tongue through his mouth in the middle of the sentence. I think it means something different than grooming. Um, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I'm with you on that. The eyebrow raise on semifinals is he's not really certain whether that's that's in their scope. Uh, once again, reiterates the idea of they've opened up the field as, as well as the Irish having done that as well. And so there's there's a chance for people who are in the background to get through and 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 go up against some of the classic big big teams, uh, as we'll see. I think on uh, we're, we're we're recording this uh, on a Wednesday and the big match with India I think is on Sunday and so all eyes are on that at the moment we know at this point that they were defeated by Bangladesh and so you know in hindsight we can see that uncertainty and that look for approval of can we make those semi-finals it then turns out as I understand it it's not just how they play that gets you to a semi-final it's how others do as well there's a little complexity in there so so so, you know, you've, you've got other teams have to do badly or do really well for you to get into a semi-final position. But anyway, he thinks he stands a chance. There's an opportunity, but much depends on factors that he just has zero con control over. And so we don't see a blustering and boisterous kind of um, leadership here. We see one which which is about the team, about the opportunity, and about let's let's see how we do. We'll do our best. Uh, Chase, what do you see in this one? Yeah, more, more of the leadership stuff going on right here. And I want to talk about this eyebrow movement really quick. Our eyebrows tend to go up when we want approval and down when we want understanding. So if I want you to understand something, the eyebrows will go down. If I want some approval, they're more likely to go up along with the tone of my voice. So just think of it that way. We want approval. We want understanding. And we see both of those here. And we see them at the precise points. <clears throat> if we were looking at Mark, like you just said, not the boisterous uh, leader, but the the humble servant leader, you might you might say. Scott? All right. Was when he's asked about how excited he is, he shows how excited he is. He's got that big smile going on. He starts moving around. But but while he's doing that, he's trying to contain that excitement because he's trying to look pro and professional as he is. Um, then then he's, he's still got those, like you were talking about, Greg, those um, mouth grooming gestures happen in there. And I'm sure there's a bunch of reasons for that as well, like you were, you were saying. His illustrators are controlled and they're on point and they land where they should land. When someone is using their, their illustrators, like we've been talking about, like I've been saying, when they land where they're supposed to, when they hit each word like that, that's fine. That's what they should be doing because that means their brain is locked up with whatever's happening right then. But if they do this and they say the word is probably something really good, and it, they're hitting where there are no words or hitting behind or hitting too soon, then that, that lets you know they're thinking about something else that's going on. doesn't necessarily mean they're being deceptive or anything like that. It just lets you know that they're not not sure about what their, their answer is. It could be deception, but I think um, in something like this, he's not doing that, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't, we're not seeing that. But I want you to know what, that's what it is if you ever see those out of sync with what the person is saying. His cadence is as fast as it's been so far cadence is how you speak it's, it's the speed you you talk at and while he's speeding up his diction the way is is the clarity of his words are clean and clear everything's still really good this shows more excitement even though the energy is ramped up his diction is still very clean and just spot on you can understand every word he's saying nothing's mushing into anything and again, he spreads out this praise he's, he's given to the whole team, to everybody else. This is a great chance for him to say, when they throw that at him, he goes, yeah, man, because he's like the, the the main guy in the game. Were they, what was it called, Mark? The, the man, man of the match. Of the, man of the match. Man of the match. Yeah. So he was man of the match, but he's not saying, yeah, because I think this. He doesn't say I. I'm never, I haven't heard I yet. Maybe he hasn't. It slipped by me. But he spreads it amongst the team and everybody else around him. That's one of those leadership things. Jocko Willink talks about stuff like that. Just what you were saying, Chase, about when there's a problem, man, that's your problem. Not It didn't come from over here. We experienced that in, in our thing in Vegas. A problem had come up, and the guy who was running everything didn't say, this is, um, you know, this is their fault. We hired them outside of here. He took all the 
the uh, bad stuff for himself. So that was a that's a leadership thing there. He knows how to use every tool he's given like that. And that's what you see in leaders. He's when they when they give him that information, they give him these good things. Many as he spreads it out, like I was saying earlier, we've all been saying he knows how to use those. So he's experienced in that. And that's really good. Confidence is the main thing we're seeing here. I think it's really important at this point. All right. We good? Yeah. All right. How exciting is it that you're you're still alive for the the semifinals as well? It looks like a really wide open group now. Oh, I, I thought the Irish boys did that yesterday as well to the other group. So it's quite nice to be to be here where the group is wide open now, and not just wide open. That Zimbabwe has got a really good chance to achieve something. I'm not going to start looking or thinking about the semifinal. I'm going to take one game at a time and 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 look at Bangladesh and take it from there. All right. Uh, Sikandar, how important this win is uh, for Zimbabwe cricket, especially to inspire the uh, next generation of cricketers back home, uh, especially this win and uh, other wins against the major teams? So, brother, we spoke about this yesterday as well, and, and, and I'll tell you, we have a lot of youngsters now picking up the picking up this sport back home. Um, a lot of the parents are accepting that their kids can have a future in this sport. So... I personally feel that we have an this group have an added responsibility to make sure cricket grows in Zimbabwe. We always talk about that Zimbabwe has a very small pool of players, but that's because not many players may be playing or taking this sport. We want to make sure that this group of boys can actually encourage and achieve something where not just the players, but their families and everybody can truly believe that there's a future in the sport and we can raise the flag high. Thank you, everyone. All right, Chase, what do you got? Uh, so we see a lot more confidence here and is very fluent in his language, fluent in the deliveries, confident, and he's referring to everyone as brother. That is not some weird thing that just he is doing. This is very, very common uh, in this part of the world. But he seems to stand up after receiving a cue, it looks like, from the back of the room. Uh, but it, it when I first looked at this, I thought he was just like, all right, I'm out. I'm bouncing. But then you can go back and look and you can see him. He gets some kind of a cue from the back of the room that he's that he's done with questions there. That's that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing a leader. Greg. Yeah, I think we see confidence. This is the first time we hear him really use the word I. He says, I personally believe that. And he's talking about they're going to grow and this is going to become stronger. Also, that they have an obligation to be role models for this up and coming generation of folks. Sounds like confidence. Sounds like, hey, we got more work to do. We're going to do it. So if if we're leaning on this guy to say whether or not he thinks they're going to win, I think he does. Scott. All right. Um, now we've come to a place where he's using his illustrators the most. And they're following exactly where they should and when they should. Right on the point when he's when he's talking, nothing's messed up there. Again, that's another uh, key to let you know someone's confident about what they're talking about. He starts using his head as an illustrator as well. He has a little bit up to this point, but not as much. And he's doing that while he speaks, and that gives us that that makes him look more sincere. So if you want to look sincere about something you're, and you're trying to get that point across, use your illustrators, but use your head too to make sure you get that point across that it's important, like I did just then. Um, not, not much illustrating from the left hand, which was interesting. It means absolutely nothing. But I just noticed that and thought I'd throw it in there. And these are all the cues we're seeing of sincerity and being earnest about what you're talking about. And leaders do that. They'll get all excited and, they'll, and, and not only does he spread the praise around, he spreads that excitement by acting that way and doing those things. So that's what I got. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, interesting. I couldn't agree more. This is where I think we see him at his most confident. The the baton gestures, which is where you conduct along to the rhythm of your speech. It's in the head. It's in the hands that he's using, um, especially on we have an added responsibility. He slows down. He's stronger with his voice. So he's uh, even more confident uh, and assured about the team's inspirational role to the country, to the kids, to the to the parents. We get encourage, achieve, big ch sounds that he puts extra stress on as well. So look, I think uh, he, he was confident around the win that they had. I don't think he quite knows how they're gonna go on and win. I think that will be kind of, you know, God willing and things falling in the right place will, will mean they, they, they go on. But is he absolutely assured of their inspirational role back in Zimbabwe? I think he's totally assured ab about that. So fantastic to see that. 
Uh, Sikandar, so, so how important this win is uh, for Zimbabwe cricket, especially to inspire the uh, next generation of cricketers back home, uh, especially this win and uh, other wins against the major teams? So, brother, we spoke about this yesterday as well, and, and and I'll tell you, we have a lot of youngsters now picking up the picking up this sport back home. Um, a lot of the parents are accepting that their kids can have a future in this sport. So. I personally feel that we have an this group have an added responsibility to make sure cricket grows in Zimbabwe. We always talk about that Zimbabwe has a very small pool of players, but that's because not many players may be playing or taking this sport. We want to make sure that this group of boys can actually encourage and achieve something where not just the players, but their families and everybody can truly believe that there's a future in the sport and we can raise the flag high. Thank you, everyone. All right, well, let's throw it around the room and talk about what we think we've seen this part uh, up to this point. Let's kind of sum it up, wrap it up. Mark, why don't you go first? Yeah, here's what I'd say. If you are watching interviews with him right now and he's being as assured as we saw him in that last video, as assured about winning, then India, you might well be in trouble. <laughs> and Pakistan, you're probably liking that, <laughs> okay? Um, but regardless of what happens uh, in the... T20, uh, what a great leader, what an inspiration to people back in Zimbabwe. Uh, undoubtedly, we're going to see more of this person. Great thing to watch in terms of leadership. Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I, I just want to echo that. Watch this again and look for differences in behavior in the next video that's coming out before a game when he's getting asked about upcoming games. You can compare those two things directly and you'll have more insight than probably just looking at the behavior. He's done all the research. The behavior tells you the research that you don't even have to do. You'll get a good look at it. Greg? Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity to look at a guy who is not boastful, but was humble in his approach and saying, look, it's us, it's not me. His choice of words, his body language, he becomes more emphatic, including his eyebrows, his face, his hands, and everything gets congruent as he's talking about the team and their mission and moving forward. So these guys feel like they have a mission. That always helps people to be more productive, more aggressive, and more likely to win. So India, if you're paying attention, you might want to look at a couple of things. I know that I believe it's a combination of Bangladesh and and Zimbabwe that stand between India and the semifinals, if I read correctly. That means that when he does that tongue jut, when he said Bangladesh the day before, look for that. All the tongue jut means is it's kind of a rejection. If you think about your children, when they don't want to eat something, they push their tongue out of their mouth, pay attention. It might be a good indicator. India, we'll see. Scott, what do you got? All right. There, I did this thing for a thing called Sports Bet. It's a sports betting app. And it was like this. We went on um, and it was a live thing. And you could get on the net and watch us talk about the people that we saw. And it was uh, me, a sports psychologist. And I, uh, I can't remember what the, what the guy did, the other guy did on there. But as we watched these things, all I was supposed to do is tell you what I thought I saw in their body language. And they weren't really doing anything. They were staying around, coming out, walking around, talking, those types of things. And I said, by looking at their, the confidence that we're seeing in this in this team's body language, there were two games we watched. I said, I think I would vote for those. Oh, I couldn't say I'd bet on them, but I said I would. I would believe that these people are going to win. And that team won. The first team won. And then I said, pick for the second one. And the second team won. And I'm seeing the same kind of stuff on this guy. That confidence. Now, if you see more than one of them run around with this in there then you can pretty much say they know they're going to win or they know they're better. I don't know how you would know, but that's the feeling I got when I was seeing these basketball teams because you could see them and the, the difference was dramatic in, in how each team acted when they were out there. Not just they were fired up. You see that fired up confidence and you, you see it and go, okay, anybody can be into it and believe it. But these people knew it. I don't know how to explain that any better, but you could see it on them. And that's what I'm seeing on, on this guy. So, uh, hopefully, Pakistan. If you're if you're got more than one person acting that way, you probably do fairly well. Unless India's got people acting even more like that than you are. <laughs> All right, fellas. I think this was a good one, and uh, we'll see you next time. So, what do you got?